Hello and welcome back to my channel to a video that I have been looking forward to for so long. If you've been watching me for a hot minute, you know that getting indie books out into the community is a big part of why I started my channel. I've put up I don't even know how many indie reviews at this point and I've made lists and I have the indie authors list which I still gotta work on. But it hasn't taken all that much. It hasn't really gotten out there the way that I wanted it to. So I'm taking a different tactic here. I am going to start this new series in which I research specific booktubers and recommend them books from the indie spectrum, either self-published or published by an indie press, that I think might be to their specific tastes. Now, I didn't intend for this to have any sort of overarching theme episode to episode, just three booktubers per and, and move forward, but it kind of uh, developed a theme on its own. I knew uh, going into this that I had the perfect pick for Rhiannon from Crescent Moon Reads, and then I put on Twitter, would anyone else be interested in, in having an indie recommendation specifically for them? And Brody from A2 Brody decided that they would like their own indie recommendations. And I thought, I said, you know, Rhiannon is non-binary. Brody is non-binary. Let's throw in Jesse from Bowties and Books and make this the NB episode, because why not? And so here are my three picks for three booktubers that I hope they will like. I will give you uh, the overview of why I think they would like them. I'm also going to be speaking kind of in that second tense using the word you because I'm low-key hoping that someone might want to film a reaction to this. Maybe. But I'm really excited, so let's jump right in. First up, we're going to go with Jessie from Bowties and Books. Now, Jessie, you are my most recent subscribed to, uh, so as a result, I haven't watched too, too many of your videos, and I've actually relied a little bit more on your Instagram for this part. And I noticed that you really liked Circe, and you love Greek mythology and retellings, that you also like maybe some more darker things, as well as strong feminist overtones in the works that you read. And putting all of these together, I think you would enjoy Pomegranate by Nicole Scarano. This is an indie retelling of the Hades myth, but in this case, Hades is not the brother of Zeus and Poseidon, but the immortal woman that Zeus once loved. At the beginning of the book, she is this red-haired, gorgeous woman that Zeus favors above everyone else, but when it comes time to get married, he must marry to retain his power and chooses Hera over Hades. And Hera, in her jealousy, decides that Zeus has to get rid of Hades entirely. And so he makes her the god of the underworld. Now, at the beginning of the story, this is not any kind of a good thing in more ways than one. The underworld is basically sealed up and it takes the mythical chosen one to unseal it. So in making her god of the underworlds, he's basically saying that she's going to wander around this tiny little stretch of dark land uh, for eternity. Well, as it turns out, because of course that's the way, Hades is actually the mythical chosen one to unseal the underworld and bring it back to its full power, its full terrifying power. And this is where it gets good. Because at the beginning of the story, Hades is just this, you know, relying on a man. Her basic entire existence is about being Zeus's lover. But in becoming god of the underworld, and they still call her king, even though she is referred to by feminine pronouns, so a little bit of, of genderqueer fun there for you. She rises to the occasion and starts rebuilding the underworld and decides that, you know what? She's going to put herself on the same even playing field as Zeus and Poseidon. She's currently, at the beginning of the story, the number th three of the big three, only a name, but she's going to change that. And I'm not going to lie, uh, she does not do the best uh, morally upstanding things to earn that power. Got to... I love for a little bit of moral grayness there. There also is a bit of a romance. No one is kidnapped. Thankfully, I did not need that story retelling. I'm not the biggest fan of that. But there is a mortal lover, which throws things even into a bigger tizzy because Zeus, despite the fact that he pushed her aside, is still jealous. And 
brings out the full force of his jealousy and then pushes Hades to do even bigger, better things to retaliate. And so it turns into maybe a full out war of the gods. Uh, but I loved watching Hades come into her power and into her confidence, uh, watching her basically scream at the council, I am the god of death was fantastic. One of my favorite scenes. Um, the only thing that would keep it from being the ultimate five star for me was a decision made for plot purposes near the very end that I wasn't the biggest fan of. And I can't explain why, obviously, because I don't want to spoil it for you. But I'm hoping because it is the first in the series that it'll be addressed in the next book. But I figured because of the dark overtones, the Greek mythology, and obviously the very heavy feminist themes of a woman gaining her own power to be on the same footing as the guy that she was once dwarfed by. Uh, I think you would really, really enjoy that one. Next up is Brody from A2 Brody. I have been watching you for a little bit longer. I watched the video where you played a uh, fuck, Mary kill and killed me. It's fine. I'm not better. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not. Uh, but you were messaging me and we talked and I was a little bit nervous about this one, but I just love the book so much and I really want to talk about it and I think you'll enjoy it. Now you mentioned that you like maritime horror and the book I have is standard maritime pirates and such with some scary content and that is our Bloody Pearl by D.N. Brin. If you follow me on Twitter, which I think you do, uh, you'll probably seen me mention this before because I can't shut up about this. This is a steampunk pirate novel all about a siren who was captured by an evil pirate captain and tortured for years and then a maybe good pirate captain comes in and rescues them only they're not sure that they can actually trust him and what designs he has. Uh, now if you're paying attention there I'm using they and them pronouns because sirens in this world are either genderqueer or non-binary. It's not made exactly clear. Basically, as Pearl, our siren MC, explains it, sirens basically change their equipment as is needed for reproduction. So they could be born with one set and just change it to the next because, oh, we need more people or sirens to, to get pregnant or whatever. So they don't quite understand why humans need to have he and she in the first place. So I figured, obviously, you'd enjoy the that aspect. Uh, there's also an FF romance between a gay lady pirate and her inventor lover, uh, who is probably one of my favorites. She's one of those uh, shorter, like, spunky inventors of the steampunk world. There are also some very big themes that I wasn't expecting about handicaps and disability. As a result of their imprisonment, Pearl basically lost the use of their tail to the extent that they can't feel it at all. And they're trying to figure out how can they go be in the sea if they can't even swim around in it. And another character, uh, and I won't get too much into it because it happens in the middle of the book, um, also suffers an injury that leaves them at basically less mobility than they had before. And so there's a lot of emphasis on grieving the changes, but also rolling with them and, and coming back stronger. And I really loved that. Uh, there's lots of, of creepy scenes. Uh, Sirens Beyond Pearl are still a scary bunch with very sharp teeth and a hatred of humans and other humans hunting sirens. So there's some great action scenes between sirens and humans fighting each other during like a storm because of course it's during a storm. And I loved those uh, also, and it's also unexpected, uh, near the very end. There are two characters that fall in love, and again, I don't want to spoil it, and it comes out that they are both ace, and they mention, you know, one of them says, well, you know, don't relations really include this, and I don't know that I really feel that for you, and the other character goes, yeah, I've never felt that for anyone either, so they basically agree that while they're both romantically attracted to each other, no sexual feelings whatsoever, and I loved that. Overall, I was 
going into this book originally for the book junkie trials thinking like oh cool fun pirates and i was not expecting the sheer depth of diversity that was present it was a delightful surprise and so anytime i've heard someone complaining about lack of diversity on twitter uh in books i'm constantly repping it because i just love it so much and you know what i think you will too last up is rhiannon from crescent moon reads this one I'm a little bit nervous about because I have watched Rhiannon for a while. They were one of the first that I ever watched as a booktuber. Uh, and their readathon, the Witchathon, was the first readathon I ever partook in. So, like this one, I'm a little bit nervous about, but I can't help but think, Rhiannon, that you'll love this. Now, you mentioned before that obviously being a witch yourself, you love anything involving witches, uh, even when it's maybe not totally true to life, because like, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West, not exactly true to life. Um, but I also know from your discussion about the Hunger Games that you're really into sisterly type subjects and sisterly love. And with those two things in mind, I think that you'll love only Words by Summer Kiska. This was one of my favorites of the indie books I've ever reviewed for my channel, and I'll put the link down below if you'd be interested in watching that. This is about a young Celtic witch named Shane who is cursed, and she can only speak 300 words before she is mute forever, and that's a problem because in her world, magic involves using your words. On top of this, a warlock who, at the age of 20-something, still hasn't unlocked his magic, which is strange for their world, comes to her for help. And he is a delightful soft boy that I loved. And on top of all this, there may be someone coming to kill her. Now, that in itself would make for an interesting premise and an interesting idea. The magic system is very well done in this world. All of the uh, different families of magic users are connected to a pantheon of deities. So it's a lot like pagan witchcraft, um, which I know you're not pagan. At least I don't think so. You can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I like that there was that kind of nod to real life pagan witchcraft and um but what really got me what really like tugged at my heartstrings was shane and her sisters shane was one of triplets which in this world means that their magic is very strong and at the age of 13 their parents died and as a result of prejudice against magic users they couldn't go into the foster care system and their aunt could only afford to keep one of them. So Shane stayed with her aunt and her other two sisters went across the pond to Ireland to live with relatives that, as it turns out, were awful people that severely abused and mistreated them and turned them basically evil. So now Shane, on top of being cursed, has to deal with the fact that her sisters are coming um, to kill her. And it's the basic emotional crux of the book is Shane struggling because she still loves them. And they're still her sisters. I mean, they were living together until they were 13. So all of the memories are still there. She still has the cat that she <laughs> magic to talk. So there's a cute talking cat. Uh, she still has their family pet with her. And she doesn't want to fight them. And she can't really fight them because she's cursed. But... They're coming after her to kill her, and this tore my heart out because I am very close with my sisters, and that idea that one of them might want to hurt me to that extent just, like, ugh, like, reached into my chest and punched my heart. And I think that would probably... I'm hoping <laughs> speak to you as well. I know you mentioned that one of your favorite parts of the Hunger Games was Katniss stepping up for her sisters because you would do that for yours. So I feel like you would really vibe with Shane's pain in not wanting to harm her sisters and, and being stuck in a really hard place. I loved this book so much. Straight five stars. Like I mentioned, I gave it a full review. I love the author. I love this book. And when I decided to start doing this series, I knew this was my pick for you. Um, so I really hope that everyone that got a recommendation at least 
checks out the book. Um, like I mentioned before, if you'd be interested in filming a reaction, I would not be mad. I would send you the footage if you needed it. Um, also, if anyone uh, is interested in any of these books, please feel free to check them out. If I gave you a recommendation and you're like, actually, this other book sounds cool, feel free to check that one out as well. Uh, if any of you read them, please let me know and what your thoughts were. I, I want to see how accurate I am with these before I go too much farther down the road. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm actually good at this before I try to make it a whole thing. Um, but regardless, if you are a booktuber and you would like to have your own personalized indie recommendation, please comment down below or message me on Twitter with a link to your channel. Um, it will be slow going because I got to do a lot of research and read a lot of indie books to make sure that I can match things up the right way. But I'm really, really excited to do this. I already have at least one other booktuber and the recommendation in mind. Um, and also the standard, you know, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and all of that. If you are an indie author and you would like a review, please message me with that as well. Have I got everything? I think so. <laughs> so with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.